got a video for you that's it's a little introduction here um, for my interview with a friend and uh, another member of the real estate community that I'm involved with just to kind of give you guys some insight into what's going on here and what we do and I've known Martin for almost a year now and uh, he's just been a great guy and he's working hard and he's got a lot of stuff coming up so um, rather than just hear me talk all the time I'm gonna cut to the video and you can hear Martin talk a little bit about what he's been up to hello I'm here with Martin Potter how's it going I'm well hey sir. Uh, Martin fellow real estate investor um, a mentor a good friend a good person um, we're just hanging out and we figured that we would communicate with the world um, some of the stuff we've been working on and learning and that's been working um, actually I want to ask you because I want people to know so you're a real estate investor how many how many deals do you have going right now currently are you working on currently I have two um, essentially fix and flip deals going right now all right um, one I put in a contract yesterday Nice. Yes. And the I other saw. one, I closed on the buy side, so I had it in a contract. We closed. That was a week and a half ago. All right. And then I'm actually There's in negotiations a with a third um, down here in Denver in Wash Park area. So you got three deals basically going right now. Uh huh. Sounds like. And then how many have you completed already? So these will be my fifth, sixth, and seventh deals. Nice. Okay. So. That's awesome, by the way. Congratulations. Thank you. Yeah, I appreciate it. So, how long, how long did you, how long were you studying before, you know, did you really put time in before you got your first deal? Well, I didn't even really know that this was an option. You know, I had always worked normal jobs, and barely at that. Uh, if you catch my drift. Yeah. Um, you know, just hourly wage wages. That was all that I knew. That's all that most people know, right? They don't they don't tell us a whole lot about what it looks like to be an entrepreneur, and the type of lifestyle you can have being an entrepreneur. Right. You know, and that's that's a whole. They don't teach subject. us that in we, school. That's yeah, for sure. We could get into it, that subject. That's a whole mm -hmm. other thing about programming, and certain things in this country. Anyway, yeah, that's a long discussion for yeah, um, which we may have to have at some point. We might have to. Um, so I, um, that's what I was used to. And when I moved out to Colorado, same thing on that same grind. And I got to a point in between different, few different jobs and somebody said, Hey, the real estate market out there is great in Colorado. And this was 2013. Great. They said, you know, you should get your license or look at that as an option. Same thing I was doing. And so I said, okay, you know what? You're right. I'm tired of messing around, low paying jobs. This is going to be my new career, and this is what's going to set me free financially, right? I'm going to retire doing this. That was my thought process. Shortly after getting my license, right, I went through the process, took the class, passed the test, blah, blah, blah. Um, I realized it was, a, it was a glorified sales job. It was a high-paying sales job, which, depending on who you ask, they already know that. Right. I was really naive. I was like, you know, this was, I was, I was 24. So I had no idea what... You're 26 right now, right? I'm 27 27, now. you had a birthday. Uh-huh. So, um, so yeah, so that, that's what was going on, and I finally got my license. I was, like I said, I was 24, and I, um, it just didn't make sense. I, it, I was, instead of trading hours, I was just trading, I really wasn't, I was just trading time. I was still trading hours. And you weren't getting a lot a, of return for it. It was just it. in a different form. Right, and that's the other thing. It, when I said sales, I really meant sales, hundred percent commission. Yeah. So it's not like you don't eat, having a job. You don't eat until something closes. Right. It's yeah. not. It's and, and that's the other thing that I really thought was gonna take me there was when I got started. They always said, you know, they always told me, "Now you're a real estate agent, blah blah blah. You have your own business." They harp on that. You have your own business. Sure. Because it's supposed to make, I guess it's supposed to make you feel better about yourself, <laughs> that you're self-employed now, instead of working for someone else. But the problem was, I didn't realize that 
the job really owned me. I didn't own the, the job. Yeah. The job owned me. Right. And so I didn't even, you know, I didn't own the business. The business owned me because the reason that I say that is because a true business, it works with a system so that the owner of that business can leave and the business still makes money. This right? is it's cash flow quadrant, revenue. rich dad, poor dad Correct. theory. Yep, this is the right side quadrant of the cash flow quadrant. Check that out if you don't know what we're talking about. Robert cash Kiyosaki. Flow quadrant. Just look up cash flow quadrant. So when I realized that, I said, you know what? I'm not, this isn't the right side of the quadrant. And at the time, I didn't know what the quadrant, I didn't know the quadrant You didn't even know what that was. I just understood this isn't what's going to set me free because there's no way I can create any type of passive income for retirement. Right? Yeah. That's what I was looking for. I didn't believe this hype of having to work for 30 or 40 years of your life in order to enjoy to get the one To get a house, it takes 30 years. Right. To it enjoy three the, months to build, but 30 years of exactly. work. To... So I just didn't buy into that, and I knew there were other options. I just had no clue what they were. So when I, when I became an agent, you know, like I said, I had thought a lot of very naive thoughts that I had were I could get into this and create this, create retirement with this. But something I didn't think about was now I want to ask you this. Do you know any retired real estate agents? No, actually, I'm, I met From a really, real estate agent, a really cool older dude who uh, gave me an Uber ride, actually, in his brand new bins. And he had a couple real estate agencies and had set up a bunch of Remaxes and stuff out here. And he was still working, and he was ready to pass it off, but he still worked a lot. And, um, yeah, I don't... I'm sure he could have retired. I don't Maybe. know. Maybe. But I'm just saying that the the amount of the ratio is so small. It's just like pretty much like anything else. So what does that tell you? If you want to become financially free and retire early, which my I'm on track to retire much earlier, right, right when I'm around 30 years old, I'll be done. Um, yeah, they just didn't so, have that option, so I, I, I started exploring some more things. So you found something that would work mm -hmm. to I hit your out. goal, which is the key. I mean, you got, you're going to have to find a system to hit your goal, whatever that is. So you found a system. You got involved with the real estate investment group mm -hmm. that we're all involved in, which is Renata's, right? But what do you, So what do you think? There's plenty of people that get information, and they get tools, but they don't put them to use. And so the results don't get there. So they say, well, the tools must not work. Even though they work for other people, mm -hmm. what do you think is the biggest, what is a person's biggest obstacle to success, in your opinion? There's... Um, I would say the biggest obstacle would probably be... Um, the... The space between knowledge and applied knowledge. Which is action. Exactly. Mm -hmm. So I would say the biggest gap and the biggest reason that a lot of people that have this ambition to be successful don't become successful, and success is a general term we're throwing around. Everybody has their own definition of success. Yes, yeah, should be defined on each, on each person's I'm own talking terms. About, well, I'm really talking about any type of success, but for me... It's financial success so that sure. I can provide for my family and help help people. Yeah, that's and pretty do, do what I want to do. So on that level, I would say people learn this stuff. There's I see so many people learning this stuff and you know really getting into it and saturating themselves with it and just immersing themselves in this information and it's awesome. But if you never make a move, you're just as dumb as the guy next to you that didn't waste all his time learning this stuff. Yeah, you got a garage full of the world's best tools, but you aren't use, you aren't working on anything. And so, if you're Why watching, is that? if you're watching, this, Why is that? That's and, the question. And you have all those CDs and books and different things about real estate investing. I've met tons of people like that. They've gone to the seminars and they bought the book and they walked, they read the book even, but they're Which still stuck at home. Or at their crappy job, it's time to take some action. You're doing something wrong. You missed the point. You missed it. So I got. So, at, all right, I have my opinion on that. So, action, in my opinion, so 
and this is kind of lifted off other personal development guys. I didn't invent this. This is NLP, neuroassociative conditioning, Tony Robbins, whatever. It's all the same stuff. There's, a, there's actually a lot of people teaching this. Tony did not invent this. He got it from other guys. Your beliefs about yourself, about what you think is possible, about the world around you, is that's going to determine, that's really your philosophy, how you look at the world, and that's going to be boiled down into a simple little belief, which can be a sound bite that you're probably going to repeat to yourself over and over in your head, right? So you get to pick what those are. Most people don't realize that. You get to pick what your beliefs are. You think, well, this I was told this, and I was told that, and I was told, and then you go with probably what you heard the most of, or what your parents told you to think, or what your teachers told you to think. That's most of society. But those beliefs don't necessarily come from the people that are successful that you want to emulate. Those beliefs bring certain results. And if you don't want those certain results, that system is not for you. That system of beliefs is not going to work for you. So in my opinion, if you, if you believe money is evil, if you believe you have to take advantage of people to make money, you will never make money because you don't want to take advantage of people if you have any kind of empathy or, you know, compassion for other human beings, you're not going to want to do that. Now, some people have no problem with that, but we're really not talking about those people. This is not for them. If you, if you actually believe that you can help people and the, the way you earn a living is by helping other people, guess what? You're going to help people to make a living. It's much easier to do that, by the way. And I just happened to find out that's exactly what I, what is required. It is what I do now. That's it. You solve people's problems and you make money. Yep. I didn't invent that. That's somebody else. Jim Rohn. Listen to Jim Rohn. Jim Rohn all day. So on that topic, because we were talking about this, part of this personal development and beliefs and your philosophy is going to come from getting the proper input, right? Yep. So you got to put the right stuff in your head. It's oh, garbage yeah. in, garbage out. So put some positive stuff in. You're going to get the positive stuff out. So. On that topic, what are what's some of your favorite books of all time? Any books, but particularly as pertains to personal development? Well, I would say, if you're not familiar with Think and Grow Rich by Napoleon Hill, that's the entrepreneur's Bible, in my opinion. Yeah. Um, that's day one. You have, I noticed just a minute ago, you have a Napoleon Hill, on your wall, you have a Napoleon Hill from Think and Grow Rich. I do. The... One well, of the success formulas in there. So, so it's it's actually uh, the self confidence formula. Okay. And it doesn't. That's not what it sounds like. It's 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 um. I yeah. It's a big deal. It's a big deal. Um, it's an affirmation. You know, people. You know, I had this I had this uh, stigma about affirmations before <laughs> I started really getting into personal development. I don't know if anybody can relate to this. Yeah, you're doing affirmations all the time, whether you realize it or not. Well, not only that, but I just thought affirmations were, like, silly. Yeah, just it seems like a little baloney. new age yeah, like, wahoo. Yeah, like, like, I don't even know. Weird but there's medicine a tape, doctor. But there's a tape playing focus, in everyone's focus. head all the time. There's a tape playing in your head all the time. Now, so affirmations are really, you become aware of that and you decide to take control of that. That's really what it boils down to. So I'm not a big affirmation person still, but having said that, I do, I try to make it a point every day to read aloud the self-confidence formula. That's why That's I have awesome. it printed out and right next to my mirror in my bathroom. Yeah. Because I go to the bathroom every day when I wake up <laughs> and I go, I'm in there for whatever reason, whether I, I need to shower or what. I have a reminder, so a I sticky note by the lever on my toilet that reminds me to flush the emotional diarrhea smorgasbord. Mm. So every day when I see that, it does one thing that's really important. It makes me laugh. And when I laugh in the morning, that just sets the tone for the whole day. Mm -hmm. And it reminds me that whatever it is that's nagging or you could go into nagging about, is probably not worth it and you just need to drop it and, and laughter helps to do right. that. So. so yeah, so Think and Grow Rich would be one of the best ones. Um, greatest Salesman in the World, Ogmandino. Again, it's not like what it sounds like, but it is called The Greatest Salesman in the World. Um, man, there's a ton. I could go into a ton of books. But, foundationally, beyond even books, for me, Jim Rohn, going back to Jim Rohn. Jim Rohn is the sole reason that I was open 
to this idea of becoming on, an entrepreneur and doing something that's awesome entrepreneurial yeah. with my life i know other people that he personally that he has uh, helped change their life and really propel them into a better stage and he's and got a bunch of books that are all good yeah but his live speaking seminars he doesn't he's not alive anymore he died a couple like 15 years yeah, ago like or something. Yeah, 2008 or something. I, um, I think earlier than that. But anyway, so his live speaks, uh, his talks, his presentations that he does, those are what get me. They're awesome. And so you can get, you can find those on audio recording. Um, They're all over YouTube. There's really long ones on YouTube, a couple anyway. Yeah, there's a bunch of them. So if you want to start somewhere, I would say... Um, he has an it's an audiobook version of this and it's a mix between a few things um, an interview essentially it's an audio private interview it's a mix between that and some of his live stuff that's cool what is it's that it's called the day that turns your life around i'm actually going to write that it's down. incredible you find it online down. somewhere i don't know exactly know where it is i actually illegally downloaded it but <laughs> i um, yeah, that's that's one of the best ones. It's called "The Day That Turns Your Life Around" by Jim Rohn. R O H N. Yeah. Okay. I'm telling you, that is the sole reason. If I were to choose one specific thing that changed my pers perspective and you know, that changed particular my mentality, talk even. It, it wasn't even that specific one, but it was just Jim Rohn in general. His whole philosophy. His is whole awesome. philosophy on life and what. You know, it's great. Yeah, he doesn't. He tells you to go to the concerts, go to the basketball games, enjoy life. Like yeah. provide. It's a really positive, awesome thing. Um, I wanted to add this before I forgot because that's my brain will go on to ten other things. I I didn't know. I just learned this like last year or two years ago. Jim Rohn is was Tony Robbins' mentor. That was really the first guy Tony Robbins started working for. And really applying, you know, he was studying and reading all these books, but really started applying it and getting a personal mentor involved for his success. And actually, I went to a short Tony Robbins event in February of last year, and on the lunch break, they just played Jim Rohn the oh, whole time. Nice. Yeah, it was cool, and I grabbed a sandwich and sat down and watched Jim Rohn. That's awesome. <clears throat> but yeah, so a lot of people don't know that. So yeah, Tony Robbins and Jim Rohn, there's like a bit of a lineage there of personal development that... There's actually a thread you can follow when you listen to Tony talk. If you know both the guys, some of the stuff they <coughs> literally says the same thing. Oh yeah, they're on par with each other. <coughs> but he's added a lot to it. Yeah. So, excellent. I mean, honestly, that's it in a nutshell. If you know where you want to go and you have a system to get there, a tool and a method to get there, and you can get your philosophies and beliefs to line up with that, to, to take action. Mm -hmm. There's really nothing that's gonna stop you. There might be obstacles, but nothing's gonna stop you unless you quit. You will hit the goal. Right. Um, and it's just crucial. So, philosophy and beliefs—that's where it all comes from. But we could both we both agreed on that earlier. We were talking. We went to go pick up some recording equipment so we could do this. So this is kind of our trial run. Maybe it sounds good. There'll be some more if it looks good. We'll keep doing it. Uh, you know. But we're not gonna. We're not just going to try to waste your time. We want to try to actually talk about something that's valuable because you have 24 hours in a day. We all have 24 hours in a day. How are you going to use that 24 hours? You know, that's a four-hour work week really taught me and some other stuff. is like if, you, if you're – this is Bruce Lee's philosophy. Absorb the useful and discard the rest. If you find something that's not useful, just – why are you wasting your time? It's not working and it's not – you're not using it. It's not useful. So what are you doing? You need to find something that works for you. And different things work for different people, you know. I have but, something that pops up in my head just totally randomly. I want to hear it. what am I doing that's productive right now? Mm. Right? So what am I looking... What are my goals? And am I doing something right now? And I'll just think of it randomly while I'm doing just whatever. That little compass yep. check. Hey, am I doing something productive or something that's just basically a waste of my time? Right. Is this is this productive in the in the sense that this will eventually help me reach my goal quicker, or not? Because if it's not true, then I'm like, oh, how do I add more of my time doing those things? Yeah, you get trim the fat. If you can lean out some of the fat, you automatically become more productive. You're just wasting less time. Uh -huh. That's that same thing you said. Is uh, it's Brian Tracy says that they says. Just ask yourself periodically throughout the day when you're walking in the kitchen and you just go, 
is what yeah is what I'm doing right now getting me closer to what my goal is. Yeah. Now you have to know what your goal is. If you don't know yeah. what your goal is and you're just wandering around, That's you have to stop and sit down and figure out where you want to go. Define your chief aim. You can set it up however you can design whatever you want your life to look like. I would encourage everyone out there to read the four hour work week just for just to expand your mind a little bit about what's possible with technology. The world is changing. It has changed. The business models that work for the Industrial Revolution and the corporate America that started in the 50s where you worked every four years and retire, those business models, they didn't have Twitter, they didn't have Facebook, they didn't have a phone. The guy, I just saw another day, um, a guy on Facebook is flipping houses on his cell phone. I don't even think he used a, a laptop and he's flipping houses over the phone. So Sam? I... Mm, now I can't remember off the top of my head because whatever, but just the the fact that that's even possible, the fact that you can even do that, that should open up your mind right there. Wait a minute, you tell me I can flip a house over the phone with no cash of my own? That's what I'm doing. You should be asking your question. We're gonna, yeah, we should get into that actually. Tell me about that. This is interesting. We're gonna we're gonna make a little project out of this. Okay. And this is gonna since okay. I got my recording gear. And... <laughs> um. Well. One of my most recent deals, one out of the three that we were talking about. This is in Colorado Springs. It's in Colorado Springs, so it's and about an Denver. hour south of where I live. And, you know, I've done a, I've done a handful of deals already, so I'm somewhat comfortable with everything. So I'm kind of using this. I decided to just start using this as my test. Mm. My test is, can I go from front to back through a transaction, negotiating, putting it under contract, Closing, fix, paying somebody to fix it, list it, sell it, right? From front to back, can I go through that entire process without ever visiting the property physically? <laughs> right? So, yeah. and I wanted to try it on this because it's only an hour from my house, right? So yeah. Worst case scenario. Emergency time, <laughs> I have to go, go there. Yeah. But other than that, I'm just going to use this as my test. And then... Once this happens, not only will it be a really cool success story, like the guy that you were talking about that's doing deals from a cell phone, essentially the same thing, Yeah. but I'll be even more confident to go outside of Colorado, where I live, and be able to do satellite transactions. You'll be nationwide. So, I mean, for all, if, if I'm able to complete this, which I, I think I will, if I'm able to do what I just said and not ever have to visit the property, who's to say that property wasn't across the country? Right. It easily it could have been across the country. And that, yeah, so you have, we have people in our community all over the country to kind of help facilitate this. Yeah, that's so kind that's, of the other piece of it, right, right? The other piece is knowing how to qualify. You have um, someone you can trust in Colorado Springs. Yes. That you met with this investment group. Yep. Through the investment group. Which but, is Jeremy, right? Yes. No, well, yeah. One of the guys. Jeremy is awesome. Uh huh. Shout um, out to Jeremy. <laughs> um,. So, what I mean is, there's a couple ways, right? So, Renatus is, has this huge resource pool of people all, all over the country, like you said. And you can call on those people because they already, it's an instant, instant credibility. I'm in, a, I'm in the group, you're in the group. Awesome. Even though we've never met each other and you live across the country. Yeah, they know what you're learning, what you're plugging into, yep. what, our, what the culture is. Yep. It's a personal development culture. And they know it's real estate investing. They know you're calling them about real estate, most likely, right? <laughs> right, it's not about... So, yeah. so anyway, so that's one way. And then also, going through this, this, this program that Renatus offers has also taught me and given me the confidence. I'm referencing the negotiating class, partly. Okay. Negotiations by yeah. Bob Snyder. Oh my God, that class is incredible. Anyways, it's instilled in me the confidence required to um, call professionals in the area, find professionals in the area, call them, and know how to qualify them over the phone to find out if they're going to be the right person that I need to work on a project. Yeah. What questions to ask? To how to, to present leverage. yourself? Yep. So I'm basically I'm just constantly leveraging. That's always what's on my mind. How do I leverage this person? Right, and if you're not familiar with leverage, it's not just take; it's give and take. What you know, what what kind of value can this person add me, and in, in exchange, I add value to them. I'm gonna throw this in the bucket. We talked about this yesterday. We, and on that note, mm -hmm. this is a little quote for you guys. I love this. This help. This should uh, maybe this will open a door. I don't know. What it did for me. You're not here to get. 
You are here to let. What is it? Like what? You are not here to get anything from the universe. You are here to let the universe work through you. So that, in a way, that's exactly what you just said. When you provide value and you're bringing something to the table, you're not just taking, you're actually giving to them and then you're receiving in return. There's actually an, a real honest exchange. Yeah, there, right? yeah, there's an exchange of currency. It doesn't always mean financial currency. What are, what are the four currencies, by the way? You guys all need to know this. This is a kind of a door-opening thing, too. There's four currencies. Yep. There's money. Mm -hmm. There's time. Yep. There's knowledge. Mm -hmm. And there's relationships. Boom, you got it. Of course I can do it. Of course, <laughs> come on. But talk a little bit about that, about the four currencies. A, a little, go a little bit deeper. We know what time and money is. We try to trade time for money. But there's other trades we can make, that's, right? Yeah, that's the thing. So when I first got started, I had no money, no knowledge, really no relationships, but I had time. Time. If you don't have money and you don't have knowledge and you don't have relationships, you probably got a lot of time. You should. So whichever one of those four you have, if you only have one, having more than one's awesome. But if you only have one, you use the one you yeah. have to trade for others. So when I got started, all I had was time. So you traded your time to get knowledge. Yep. Right, traded my time for knowledge, and then and now that I have time and knowledge, then I can trade those two for money. And you, in the in the meantime, you were still building relationships yep. within the community just yeah. by proxy of being involved. So I basically went from just having time to having time, money, or time relationships and knowledge. Knowledge. Yep. And now you got time, you got relationships, and you have knowledge. It's easy to leverage one of those things. You're leveraging your knowledge you and just, your relationships you just now. Them all. For money. for money and yeah. more time. Yeah, you've opened up a lot more time. Now. Yep. How? T let's talk about that because I think this is the this is the most important thing. People are going to say, "Well, sure, I can make a bunch of money, but it'll probably take forever, and I won't be able to." Your first deal. Well, what's forever? <laughs> if it could change your life. <laughs> so, let, let's let's start. Your first deal. You spent about how many hours on that? Your first one. This is your not your rookie. Um. Investor. About fifteen. About fifteen hours. I'd say, yeah. Let's do. We want to do the math real quick. You want to do a calculator with me? This. You spent fifteen hours, yep. and you made how much money on your first? Deal? I made thirty thousand dollars on my first deal. That was net, after paying all, you know, all the expenses and everything. So am I right? Am I crazy? Is that two thousand dollars an hour you yes, get paid? Yes, you are correct. So is your time worth two thousand dollars an hour? I, yeah, it, it should. It, it can now. be. It is now. <laughs> it, it's now. It is now. Why? Because you're bringing more value. Because you have more knowledge. Yep. When I understood that it wasn't about the hours that you put in, but it's about what you put in the hours. Right. It switched for me. Yeah. And I realized, oh, I just need to add value to what I know and what I can bring. You added value the to knowledge you. Knowledge that I have. And now around. you're sharing. Yep. I think it's awesome. It's super powerful. So yeah. I want I want people to be able to see this. Martin is. Now wait a minute. You you were a child prodigy, right? You're a genius. <laughs> of course. <laughs> yeah, and you went to no. Harvard. You're a Harvard graduate in economics, nope. right? I'm a college dropout. You're a college dropout. Okay. Barely but, graduated high school. But your uh, your great grandfather was a senator or a railroad tycoon, right? Nope. He was in real estate, right? Nope. Oh. Well, your your parents must be uh, on Wall Street in investment banking. Definitely not. Okay. So you're just like a regular dude? I mean, which is why I'm I like not this a regular guy. dude. <laughs> Don't care. But fair enough. To your point, yeah. Good answer. I have an average social background. <clears throat> yeah, you're not you're not a you're not a a duke of Eddington. Nope. And I wasn't not, born into anything. You're not a Stephen Hawking level genius. Although I will say you're very intelligent. I'm not going to take anything away from you. I and I also have a complete family. I don't know if that means anything, or probably <laughs> doesn't, but as far as my upbringing, um, my parents are still together, and I know that, unfortunately, that's a rare thing these days. Mm, that's a whole other, that's a whole other topic. Mm -hmm. We'll have to save that for another one. I'll leave that to somebody else who specializes in that. <laughs> um, <clears throat> I think that's all. So, I just wanted, we're about, what are we, about 30 minutes, we got a minute left, we're not gonna take up all your time all day. If we, you know, it's not the Joe Rogan podcast. He's awesome. I love that. <laughs> Big up to Joe. Um, but let's just uh, 
I think we should just close this out by letting people know that like whatever you really want to do or whatever you really want to achieve there's a way to do it but you got to figure out what you really want to do first to be honest absolutely and then once you do that don't float around in the wind figure out what you want figure out how to get there figure out a thing and then beyond that there's the other aspect you know you gotta you're gonna have to exercise you're gonna have to eat right you're gonna have to sleep you can't do it without sleeping you're gonna have to <clears throat> get your beliefs and philosophy right but you know we can go into that later we'll keep talking we'll keep keep in touch we're gonna keep you updated on the Colorado Springs deal Sounds good. I'm planning on going down there maybe with Megan nice. um, we'll see if maybe we'll meet down there or whatever um, well I won't be meeting you down there no yeah no, <laughs> um, <coughs> excuse me with Jeremy yeah yeah and then so the, I think it's going to be funny because Martin is not going to go he's going to be sitting on a couch to do a flip and then I'll probably go film it just to show you that it's real and what's really <laughs> happening down there. Maybe we well meet you with Jeremy down there. My picture on and in the middle of the interview Jeremy and have him yeah. talk about his whole, you know, his real his estate investing and being involved. So yeah. that is awesome. So yeah, that's great. Everyone, yeah. we'll keep you posted. I'll uh, follow up with Martin on another day. So anyway, sir, cool. Thank you for your time. Absolutely. Thanks for having me. Thank you. Peace, and we'll guys. talk soon.